What does the Bible say about marriage? Hey everyone, I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com, a place where we apply the Bible to your life. In this episode, we're going to talk about seven things that the Bible says about marriage. We're going to go through these points pretty quick. So I'm not going to list out all the Bible verses because we'd be here for hours. But if you want to do a more in-depth study on this topic, I also wrote an article. So I'll leave a link in the description of this video if you want to check that out at applygodsword.com. Point one of what the Bible says about marriage is that marriage was created by God and is good. So God created humans in his image. So it shouldn't be a surprise that God gave humans ingenuity and the ability to create and think of things and then bring them into existence, so to speak, in the idea of like governments, uh, the way society should be structured or certain cultural practices. Humans can create certain things because God's given us the ability to do that. But here's the thing with marriage. It wasn't an idea created by man. It's not something that we thought of and instituted. Marriage is a biblical principle that was right at the beginning of creation. For example, in Genesis 2, 24, it says this, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So you see in that passage, it doesn't say that a, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to a woman, and then they created marriage down the line. It says the, the man will leave his parents and then be united to his wife. So you see right there that God is actually the author of marriage. It also says that marriage is good. Everything God created is good. For example, in Proverbs 18, 22, it says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. And the same obviously goes for women who find a husband. They find a good thing in marriage. So point one, the Bible says that marriage was created by God and is good. The second thing that the Bible says about marriage is that it's something not just for Christians, but for the whole world. I know it's a Christian idea, and it's something that originated with God, but God created this for the whole world. For example, in Genesis 1.28, God is speaking to humans where he said, I'm creating you to be fruitful and multiply and to rule and subdue the earth. So marriage is, is not just an institution just for Christians. God wants all people who are called to marriage to, to join in the marriage covenant and bond with one another. And you can see this in the benefit it brings to societies. Study after study show that when uh, the marriage isn't, a traditional marriage isn't emphasized in a society, that society starts breaking down. So there's all kinds of benefits between having a, a dad and a mom helping to raise kids together. It's just super beneficial because God created it that way. The idea of marriage falls under the theological doctrine of common grace, not Every person on earth drinks of God's special grace uh, or saving grace, which is when we understand and receive and put our faith in Jesus Christ to have a relationship with God through the gospel. That's, that's a certain type of saving grace that only Christians experience. But there's another form of grace in the Bible referred to as common grace. And what that means is everything good in creation, the food we eat, the water we drink, the air we breathe, the sunshine, the crops, everything that is good is from God. And that's common grace. So even if unbelievers don't give God the recognition he deserves for the good in their life, the Bible says all that is from God. So marriage is falls under the principle of common grace given to the entire world. Point three, while the Bible says that marriage is for Christians and non-Christians, the Bible specifically says it should not be between an unbeliever and a believer. The Bible calls this unequally yoked. So the Bible says that God does not want Christians marrying non-Christians. It says that in 1 Corinthians 6 verses 14 through 15 and 1 Corinthians 7 verse 39. The fourth thing the Bible says about marriage is that it's supposed to be between one man and one woman. 
Every type of example you see in marriage points to this specific type of marriage. It's the only marriage that God ordains and has talked about in his word. So this, this means that there's two things that are for sure a sin in God's eyes. Polygamy, which would mean that there's more than a, one man and one woman in the marriage. That is a sin. Now, you might think of the Old Testament where there's certain Old Old Testament characters like King David and, and Solomon and all these other guys who actually had multiple wives. And that is absolutely true, but nowhere in the Bible are you going to find that God was condoning that or commanding that. That is something that they did on their own. God has always said, marry one woman. Also, since the Bible clearly says that marriage is between one man and one woman, this also means that gay marriage is something that's not condoned in the Bible and is sin because it's endorsing homosexuality, which again is a violation of the way God originally created humans to be paired to a, a husband and a wife. Those are some loaded statements I just said, so I'll leave a link in the description of this video for more details on that if you want all the Bible verses to back up the statements I just said. The fifth thing that I see in the Bible about marriage is that it is a unique bond between a husband and a wife. It says in Genesis 2.24, again, that a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and become one flesh. Every time you see an intimate relationship within the Bible, it's always paired with commitment. Intimacy and commitment are always paired in the scriptures. That's why premarital sex is a sin in the Bible, because you're having an extreme form of intimacy without the extreme form of commitment in the covenant of marriage. While premarital sex, I think, is pretty clear for most Christians and know that that's wrong, there's also a danger in having an emotional intimacy that crosses the line or cohabitation with someone of the opposite as of the opposite sex cohabitation and emotional intimacy are two things that should be again reserved for the marriage next the bible says that what god has joined together man should not separate in other words Divorce is something that is not condoned in the scriptures, except for one thing, uh, an actual sexual an affair. So even when an affair happens within the marriage, the Bible doesn't command a divorce, but it does allow for it. Lastly, the Bible says that marriage is a symbolic representation of the relationship between Christ and the church. It says in Ephesians 5, 22 through 33, that the husband represents Christ and the wife represents the church. That's why a husband and a wife are equally important in the relationship, but they do play different roles. A husband is supposed to lead and love his family, and a wife is supposed to love and support that leadership, which you can see in the relationship between Christ and the church. Christ is ultimately our leader, and the church is following Christ and honoring him. So marriage is such a unique, special relationship that God uses it to show us something special about Christ and his church. As you can see, the Bible says a lot about marriage. It is something super important to God. So if you're single right now and want to prepare for your future marriage, you might enjoy my book, The Ultimate Guide to Christian Singleness. It takes you through the four common phases of Christian singleness, and it prepares you for whatever season God has for you in the future, whether it be more singleness or whether it means preparing to be joined to a husband or a wife. As you can see, it's got a lot of really short chapters in it, and I wrote it more like an encyclopedia or a cookbook rather than like a novel where you need to read it from chapter 1 to chapter 30. You can flip through and find answers to the questions that you have about your season of singleness. As you can see, it's in paperback, so I'll leave a link for the uh, place on Amazon where you can check it out. But I also have a free ebook version of this on my website at applygodsword.com. So I'll leave a link in the description of this video if you want a totally free ebook of the ultimate guide to Christian singleness. Well, again, I'm Mark from applygodsword.com. If you enjoyed this video, I would encourage you to hit that subscribe button. We're pretty new on YouTube, so I'd love for you to join our growing community. 
And we're making new videos every week. We make videos about relationships, singleness, how to glorify God, how to love other people, how to love God, how to grow in your Christian faith. So if those are things that you want more information on, hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. And you can also leave us a comment in the comment section. I do my best to respond to every comment that I can. If you have a question, it's likely that I might even do a video on that. And I'll definitely try to leave a response to you in the comment section. Well, thanks for watching and God bless.